So you climb into your low rider and it drops a couple centimeters. Just from this information, your mass and the mass of the car, you can find the period of oscillation as this car goes over a bump. Well, let's do that. Let's start by finding the spring constant. Well, first thing to do is draw a free body diagram. We have the downward force of your weight, which is mg. And then balancing your weight is the shock absorbers, which is the force of the springs. And this is equal to kx. Since we're only talking about the change from equilibrium of your mass, we're only going to plug in the two centimeters here, because that's the extra distance it compressed due to your mass. Another thing to note is that the car is not accelerating up or down. Therefore, these two forces are balancing. So we have that the spring constant times the distance it's compressed is equal to your weight. And let's solve for k. So I'll divide both sides by the distance x. Cancel, cancel. And we get that. The spring constant is equal to mg divided by x. Now if we plug in the numbers, well, your mass is 100 kilograms times the acceleration of gravity, 10 meters per second squared, all divided by 2 centimeters, which is 0 0.02 meters. Great. Now you'll notice that the meters here cancel with these guys. And what we're left with, then, is that k is equal to 50,000 newton meters. Now you might say, well, what we have left over is a kilogram divided by seconds squared. That's the same thing as a newton meter. Excellent. So now we know the spring constant. Let's find the period of oscillation. Well, the formula for the period for a mass on a spring is equal to 2 pi square root of m over, oops, m over the spring constant, k. The important thing here is, what do we plug in for m? Well, what is oscillating? Is it just you? Is it just the car? Or is it you and the car? It's you and the car. So for m, we want to plug in the total mass, that is everything that's oscillating, which is the 700 kilograms of the car plus U, which is 100 kilograms. Great. So if we plug that in, we get T is equal to 2 pi square root 800 kilograms divided by the spring constant, 50,000 newton meters. And if you work that out, you get a period of oscillation of 0 0.79 seconds, which for when we do the graph, we'll call 0.8 seconds. Before we do the graph, let's talk about how I got these units of seconds. And let me pull out a scratch paper for this. Well, what did we have? We had the square root. On top, we had kilograms. And on the bottom, we had a Newton meter. OK, so first thing is the meters pop up top. So you have a kilogram meter over a Newton. And we know by definition, a Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. So if we plug that in, then we get square root of kilogram meters divided by a kilogram meter all over a second squared. So there's our complex fraction. Well, if we flip this complex fraction, we have a kilogram meter all over 1 times a second squared over a kilogram meter. And you can see these guys cancel. And then we just have square root of second squared, which is a second. So indeed, we get units of seconds. And now all that's left to do is to sketch the graph. 
and I th we want to include the effects of damping. Well, what that's going to do is lower the amplitude over time. So here's our time, and we can. this is some distance axis. I'll just label it x. And it starts off here at uh, point 0.2, sorry, point 0.02. So I'll put a negative point 0.02 meters. And then it comes up. And because it's damped, the amplitude lowers over time. So you get a big bump, and then it smooths out. And we could put in some numbers here. Well, if it starts here at the low point, the next low point is, uh, well, that's 0.8 seconds later, one period. And therefore, this would be uh, 0.4 seconds, 0.12 seconds, etc. There we go. Fully solved the lowrider problem.